Welcome back to our off-grid home build. It's the end of February and Charles has been putting the finishing touches on the plumbing drain and vent system. Getting ready to glue the last of the pipes underneath here. I'm gonna glue this piece together, drop one here and glue here, and connect this to this drain, and put the P-trap over there. All right, push down. Okay, you can let go. I'm gonna drop it down. Push. Okay, stop. That's good. That's good. If you caught the previous videos in the plumbing series, you know this is a project that Charles finds challenging. He has a lot more experience with wood and wiring than he does with pipes. So he's pretty excited about having everything in position so he can move on to the next steps, which include pulling the PEX lines from our rainwater collection system and testing the drains for leaks. Now, some of you are probably wondering how we intend to keep these pipes under the yurt from freezing. And that will be a challenge, but of course, Charles does have a plan. Before we use it in freezing weather, whether it be next year or whenever, we will build a room around the wet plumbing and insulate the room to try to keep it a little warmer. And in addition to that, there will be a heat tape that is wrapped around the water supply lines and both of the P-traps that are under there. For those who have joined us recently, these three pipes run underground to the rainwater collection cisterns, where Charles installed a pump this summer. The white is the supply line. The blue is a spare that might be used with a frost-free hydrant someday. And the red is for bringing heated water back from the yurt to thaw the lines next to it if we ever failed to keep them from freezing. water inside the house. It's actually the spare going out to the cistern, but it's also going to be used for a trunk line for the cold water. Let's go kitties. Time to get up, kitty cats. Time to get up. <laughs> what a look. Hey, we're trying to get out of bed here. Let's go. Oop, oop, oop. Yeah, for real. So I am going to take the clean out lid off of here and poke a basically a balloon plug, a blow up plug down in here to block it off so we can do a pressure test by putting water in the system to make sure it doesn't leak.
Now it's time to go put some water in, up in the top. Charles is about to test his plumbing drains, so I need to grab the water and get outside to film it. Explain. Explain what? What you're doing. I pour this water in the top of that vent and fill all this up with water and make sure it doesn't leak. Can you show us your plugs? You can see a plug right there. That's the kitchen sink. We have a similar plug in all the other drains. You see any drips? I don't see any yet. It looks like that rubber seal is pretty good. Tell me how much water you put in the system. 12 gallons. It filled up to the vent line that goes across the top there. And what was the result? We got leaks. That one's the main one. It's the gasket that goes between the bathtub drain and the, the pipe it's attached to. I think that's just tightening up the drain to make that stop. And then the other leaks are just plugs that are leaking. Thankfully. None of my fittings were leaking, which is good. Show me where it is leaking. The gasket between the bottom of the tub and the pipe. Let's go check on how Charles is doing with the second round of plumbing testing. He had the one leak, but then he had to go get some more water. We have to get our water from the neighbors. How are you feeling now, Charles? Relieved that all my PVC joints are not leaking. I had one leak on the tub drain and that just required tightening up. So now I've had water sitting in there for an hour or more and no leaks. So the hardest part of this whole process was that we didn't have much available water to use. Good morning. Charles and I woke up to the sound of birds this morning, which was very exciting. I don't just mean a couple of chickadees and a woodpecker. We looked it up and we think it was eastern bluebirds that were singing in our trees back from their winter migration. So this put Charles in a mood to do a new small project in the middle of his larger projects. So we'll go check that out. What you doing? Building birdhouses. I'll put a link to the birdhouse plans that Charles used in the description below this video. It was a pretty simple design and he was done with two houses before lunchtime.
me your prototype. There's a door in the side to be able to clean the nest box out in the fall. Put a screw in here, and you'll be ready to hang. You may be looking at these holes and thinking they're too large to keep bigger birds out of a bluebird house. Well, you're right. It turns out the hole was supposed to be two and a quarter inches long, but it wasn't supposed to be round. So Charles patched it up to make it the right size. Then he made a couple of posts to hang them. And we still need to put a baffle under each one to keep out squirrels. And then we'll watch for birds. Charles was tempted to build a house for our barred owls and one for wrens and one for bats. But now he's going to get back to work on the human habitation. <laughs>